All right, hey guys, what's going on? So today we're going to be talking about the completeness relationship. This is going to be really important because later on we're going to take this relationship and apply it to our vector fields or our gauge fields. And this is going to be of crucial importance because we'll see in this video uh, some very interesting ties in with other domains of physics, like I mentioned GR last time. So without further ado, let's get right into this. However, make sure to like and subscribe. And now let's get into it. So the completeness relationship. So we're going to talk about the completeness relationship. Let's just recall a few things. The So we want to recall that for that we got last time was something that looked like this, right? So these guys were the structure constants, things that we could, we have some sort of field and we have our photon traveling in this field. And actually let's do it like this. I'll erase the field, I'll erase this really quick. So we have our photon, it's got, it travels in like a wave. It has electromagnetic properties to it. And at every point in that, on along that wave, say you're traveling in the Z direction, at every point in that, along that wave, we can construct some orthogonal uh, basis vector system. And the way we construct that is by defining the direction of propagation. That's the Z direction. And then these two, and then the two other orthogonal vectors are going to be these things that we called last time called uh, the structure constants. And those are these guys right here, right here. And we found out that there was an interesting relationship that looked like this, right? So we have E0 times E0, and we're labeling R here, right? So we remember, we want to recall that the subscripts refer to the space-time indices and that the R's referred to, uh, there were labels that referred to the index of the basis vector, essentially. So are we referring to this basis vector, this one, or this one, right? So that's what these guys, these, these super uh, indexes will do. The sub-indexes just tell us at what point in space we're concerned with. Okay. And we found out this relationship. Okay. And we want to also recall that uh, K mu, if we're traveling in the Z direction, or if our photon is traveling in the Z direction, it has a forward momentum that looks like this. Okay. Now let's consider the following equality, or the following quantity, which is this guy right here. Right, so this guy right here is very interesting because at first glance you might think this is a little bit random, but let's take this apart. Let, let's break this apart and we'll see how this might have come about. And uh, we're going to generalize this to make it fit with these guys right here. Again, my apologies for the dogs barking. Anyways, so we have mu nu equals, so if we're looking at this here and we want to set mu and nu equal to zero in just one specific case, we'll have this right here. This is one, right? If we're looking at this as our Minkowski metric, these two guys here, well, those are going to be this zero component of our form momentum. These are the zero components of our form momentum. And then this is just a dispersion relationship, right? which is m squared. So if we do the math, right, so square root times square root is going to be what's ever in the square root. One is the same thing as this. Uh, these guys, we could see now that m's, these are now both over m squared, so we can cancel out these two guys because we have this minus this. And what we're left with is this times this, which is just a positive, and we get this right here. So our momentum in the z direction divided our, by our mass and all of that squared. So that's interesting, right? Because we found here last time, this relationship looks very, very similar. 
let's take, let's keep on going here. Okay, we'll, we'll say, okay, if mu equals nu equals one, we get this here, right? So these two guys are zero because again, we're referring to the four momentum and we get something that looks like this, right? So this is just one. You can, so, so the minus times minus sign is just positive one. Let's keep on going, right? Because I, I really want to, the, the book doesn't go into full depth here. Uh, it doesn't do all the steps into showing how this is going to be true, but I, I wanted to do it nevertheless. So if mu and nu equals two, we get the same thing. If mu and nu equals three, we get uh, th these guys right here, which, so k3, if we go here, is going to be this guy. Right, so kz times kz, it's kz squared. And what we get is what looks to be m squared, because we distribute the negative, plus kz squared over m. Right, so this looks different than our one, but let's keep on going. Let's, let's, just, let's take a look at what's going to happen here. If so if we just focus for a second on these guys, we find that these two things were the same, right? That's what I alluded to earlier. But we can generalize this, right? Because if we have a three here, as opposed to two zeros, because right, remember we said that we had zeros up here. If we just made this mu, right? And just made it general. We, we could make this three, for example. If we make that three, if we make that three, then we're looking at our structure constant, this guy right here, right? Because this is zero, one, two, three. And then everything else, so we have a zero in the three position here and a th zero in the three position here, right? So zero times zero, zero times zero. And then we have these two guys right here, which come from here. Well, that looks like that. And the, this here looks like this, All right? So we could start to see a very interesting similarity between this quantity that looks like we just drew, pull it, pulled it out of a hat and this quantity here, right? So if we continue with this line of reasoning, what we will find is that this relationship here is equal to this relationship here. And assuming we know what the context is, right? Because we, these are our structure constants. The mu and the nu refer to these guys right here, these mu and nu's, mu and nu's, so these are two mu's actually, right? We're, so we're squaring, right? This looks, well, this is very reminiscent of something I'll talk about earlier, but here we have our structure constants on one side of the equation. Here we have our Minkowski metric, and here we have some our four momentum vectors. And this here is what's called the completeness relationship, okay? The, now, the, this is the equation. This is the equation. This is a very, very interesting equation, again, because it, gives us a, a relationship between the structure constants that are associated with our gauge field, right? So the, the, our structure constants sort of fundamentally construct the basis system at each point in space, okay? They're related to the Minkowski metric, flat space, right? So we're assuming this is flat. So essentially what we're saying, right, is our Minkowski metric plus or minus something is going to give us our, this, this relationship right here. It's going to give us something that is related to our structure constants. Now, I found this particularly interesting because when you stare at this for a long time, and so when you stare at this for a long time, what you find is that there, and if you've studied GR before, if you study quantum physics also, we'll, we'll see a relationship here. If you studied GR before, you find a very, very interesting analog to this equation when you study intermediate to advanced GR, which looks a little something like this right here, right? So this is our metric tensor, right? If, you are in, if you're in to studying uh, general relativity, if you're not, then this might be a little bit of a... Uh, something that you haven't seen before, but if you have, bear with me here. You could stop the video right here if you want to. I'll see you guys in the next one if you if you do. But if you're sticking with me here, the metric tensor. Oftentimes, what we want to do in GR 
is understand the metric tensor in terms of the of any perturbation in in, uh, in the Minkowski tensor in the Minkowski metric. The Minkowski metric describes flat space. The metric tensor describes a more generalized curved space. And what you can do is you could say a perturbation in flat space is what curved space is. So this Minkowski metric with a perturbation applied to it gives us our metric tensor. Now, if you just stare at this for a second, you stare at this relationship, what you find is a, okay, Minkowski metric, Minkowski metric plus, plus minus, there's a subtle difference here, but it, nevertheless, it's somewhat analogous, plus some perturbation that has two different indices, right? Some perturbation that has two different indices. This, these two are just dummy indices, right? So those don't really matter that much. Uh, this, this here, in GR terms, is a gravitational wave term that has polarizations to it. If, you study, if you've studied GR before, or cosmology, right? Or, so the, 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 when these two are applied to one another, we get something called our metric tensor. So we compare now this, I, this idea here of a metric tensor as a perturbation in our flat space. We look at this now. So, so our structure constant is the same thing as a Minkowski metric with some perturbation in some electromagnetic wave term, right? So we have a gravitational wave term. This is a tensor. We have electromagnetic wave term. Not really a tensor, but it kind of the, the structure of the equations look the same. Now you might ask yourself, okay, this relationship, now it makes sense why this might have not been pulled out of the hat, out of a hat, a random hat. It make we what we essentially did is did some is some perturbation on Minkowski space using an electromagnetic wave term, not a gravitational wave term. And that's essentially the analog I wanted to give you guys. And so we can see here so that this term here is associated with a disturbance in uh, the Minkowski metric, not the, not, it, it, not the structure constants, uh, due to uh, the motion of the particle disturbance in the Minkowski metric, right? So Minkowski metric due to the motion of the particle. I'll move this guy just to make the sentence not look disturbed in any way. Anyways. I just wanted to throw that out, right? The, the idea that the math, mathematics and physics carries over, right? That there's not, there's obviously not a connection, as far as we could tell right now, between these two things. But there's at least analogs, and when I find analogs in mathematics and physics, I find that to be quite beautiful. I, th I find that to be, uh, to to be quite to be quite frank, I find that to be, uh very enticing to the fact that maybe there is a relationship between the metric tensor and the structure constants because they look like they have a very similar form when we look at how they're made in terms of in terms of uh, these equations and we can we can see here if you've taken GR again that the that the metric tensor is really just a, a tensor product between two basis vectors. So you might ask yourself, okay, these two these two things are basis vectors. You could very well take the tensor product of the two, and essentially what you have is the metric tensor, right? And w when you study intermediate to advanced GR, uh, you'll find the word tetrad being thrown around a lot too, and if you were to think, if you were to study tetrads, and which we will do in our in our GR playlist, then this becomes very um, the the mystery sort of starts to unfold itself. It's it's very very interesting. 
how, how the human mind can can see these analogs, right? And I remember when I was first learning about this stuff, I remember looking at this equation, staring at it for like five minutes and thinking, wait a second, this form looks very, very uh, interesting. I, I, I feel like I haven't seen, uh, like this isn't the first time I've seen this before. And that's where th that type of thinking, I think, is what leads to innovations in physics. Uh, with that being said, though, uh, I hope you guys take something out of this video, and I will see you guys in the next one.